All right, with that being said, Bria, how are you? Now I know you're driving, so I want you to be safe. I am doing well. I actually just parked right quick. I am doing well. I'm excited that I finally got this test over with. Um, this LCSW exam, it was actually my second try. Second um, try? Oh, my apologies. Yeah, I took the, um, the LMSW three times, though. Okay. So I'm not um, one who is, I will say, a great test taker, but I just, for one, my issue is I procrastinate. I know I procrastinate, and this is something I have. <laughs> I worked with my whole life, but um, I believe with your boot camp, it didn't allow me to procrastinate. It necessarily forced me to study and have a schedule, um, and that's something that I definitely was not used to. And it basically it put me back into the position like I was in school because once the next week came, it was time to go over the new questions and talk about the stuff we learned. And it's like I can't show up to class knowing I ain't studying nothing. <laughs> so it definitely put me in a position whereas it made me study and that was something I needed um knowing the content is a major part but also knowing how to answer the questions is the next major part because you can know the content all day and have no idea how to answer the question and you will get it wrong um the helping process helped me a lot to get through this exam um, because you can have a situation where you're looking at the questions, you're looking at the answer choices, and all of them look correct. Um, it, it will happen. All of them will look correct. And really, if you want to look at it, whichever stage you're in, technically, all of them could be correct. But you have to know what stage are you in. Are you in the beginning stage? If you're in the beginning stage, you're not going to start locating resources. You're going to start building that therapeutic relationship, and you're going to start doing assessments. If you're at the end, you're not doing assessments. If you're at the end, we're, evalu we're evaluating or we're about to terminate. We can't come up with brand new stuff. Like, for instance, let's say if you've seen the patient for 10 weeks and the patient just stated all of a sudden, as soon as it's time to talk about termination, oh, well, I have this issue too. Wait, let's talk about how you feel about terminating because it seems as though we've been going through this for 10 weeks and all of a sudden now you have a new issue. Not saying that issue is invalid, but you... Before you even add more stuff to the treatment plan or say, I'm going to see them pro bono um, because I want them to be comfortable, definitely look and, like, process that with them. Like, okay, how do you feel now that we are separating, we're ending this, um, we're terminating this client social relationship? So um, that was a big thing. Always, also knowing what the signs of neglect, the signs of sexual abuse, signs of physical abuse, those are big things and they expect you to know these signs and especially for the clinical exam it is all application and reasoning questions it is it's like without the whole 170 questions i probably had 10 recall 10 15 and that was either um talking about bipolar disorder or personality disorders or the defense mechanisms um i didn't i didn't have any medication questions so it's um it's definitely all about okay, this is the situation. What do you do first? This is the situation. What do you do next? What is the best thing for you to do? What should the social worker do? So the the LCSW exam that is all of that from my first and second exam. Though it's all about first, next, best should. But this exam they slammed me with first and next. It was all what should the social worker do first? You have a domestic violence victim who came in crying. What should you do first? One of the answer choices was be quiet and listen. Like, let her finish crying. And I clicked that one, so maybe it was right. I don't know. <laughs> but it seemed right to me. Um, but like I said, it's definitely all about knowing how to answer the question. Definitely get your content. Study what, you, study what you need to know. Because if you get the question, yeah, you know how to answer it. But if you don't know anything about the, the answer choices or even the questions, you, you really can't answer. You're definitely going to be guessing. And some people guess good, some people guess bad. So it's definitely study. Um, I, I wouldn't say um, study too many medication questions or anything because from my research, from talking to other people who've passed, other people who've taken this um, test several times, it's like know the, the main stuff, like lithium. Well, lithium is dealing with bipolar disorder. What is depression? Like it's just certain certain ones that 
the the not the normal ones, but the ones you always see. Um, just in Korea. Case. Not the. Uh, I want to redirect you a little bit because I, I'm glad you're talking about your experience of your clinical exam. Um, I had to get you because you talked about it in Black Girls and Social Work. I said, "What? Bree ain't tell me. I trained you." So I was like, <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad I I was able to caught you. Could you talk about a little bit more about what your experience was in terms of your preparation? Um, in reference to the tools that you received, because you were well trained um, through the boot camp, and what did you experience in terms of what benefited you in terms of the structure, in terms of the support, in terms of breaking down the questions? Because, of course, obviously you passed, so the outcome you needed, you got. But what did you get in terms of being a part of the boot camp community? Uh, for one, like you say, definitely that structure. And you are always available if we had an issue or had a question we had um a chat and if anyone had questions we were always there for each other you had that readily available support like once you get in the boot camp that chat is gonna go all day <laughs> so it was definitely um like i say the structure we had several people in the boot camp there wasn't a question where you felt it was a dumb question you can just go ahead and ask it because you never know who else have that same question um, you broke the units down into sections. We did every, like, it wasn't in the beginning, you give, you give all the information, but you have to go through it section by section, week by week. So it's definitely, um, it wasn't overwhelming. I would say it was felt like it was doable. And basically since I passed, it was doable. <laughs> so it was, um, it was definitely good how you structured it out. Because, for instance, let's say with the Apgar book, that book, to me, that book is very in, in, intimidating. But once you get um, all your information in the Dropbox and everything, and each thing is in a different file, it's, it's like, okay, I can do this. I don't feel as pressured as overwhelmed. So definitely your, your structure was awesome. Well, thank you, Bria. Um, the other part I wanted to point out was you talking about your, just the confidence that you had. Uh, with the exam, I do let people know um, that, and Bria can attest to this, a couple of others in the audience can, that I cover everything because on the ASW outline, even though it may, you know, you talked about you saw certain medications on there, you don't want to leave anything to chance because you got 170 questions coming from the whole entire outline. So if you look at the ASW outline, whether it's the handbook that they have on their website, which is the only official ASWB handbook, um, it'll tell you that medications is something, especially on the master's in clinical, that they can throw it at you. So even though you didn't, may not have gotten any, you want to make sure that you have an overall view of the content, which, Bria, you were adequately prepared for because we did those drills, and you got the structure, and you were organized. Now you are licensed now. So what would you tell, and I forgot, Bria, before that, before you joined Blue Cap, you were in our community for a little bit, I think off and on. What made you take action? Oh, what, made, what made me take action towards what? Towards getting into yes, the camp or saying in What made you take action? Yes. What was it? Uh, I knew I needed um, some form of assistance to do this um, studying thing because I knew I couldn't do it by myself. Um, I, me personally, like I say, I'm a procrastinator. I need someone to be like, okay, we have group on this day. We're studying this day. So that was, that definitely what it was for me. And also, um, not someone, to, well, like I say, not someone to be on my back, but to someone to actually be there and to have that support from someone else. Because for instance, with the LCSW, a lot of my classmates, they, they've already taken it. They've passed or some people is still struggling. But I know a lot of people who have passed. So um, around that time when I did take the boot camp, I was still in supervision. But I was trying to pre-prepare because I didn't want it to come to a time where the board say, okay, yes, you can test. And then I finally just start studying. Oh, sorry, I have oh, to you're all right. Me. Is that your little one? Yes, that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> See, yep, I hear him. I was like, he loud and clear. But um, I'm not going to hold you long, Bria, because you have places to go, and I, I'm glad you came in. We have a professional development session to do in another week, ma'am, to talk about what's next for you in our Zoom call, well, our Zoom, um, to talk about some things that you need to do to elevate your career beyond just the traditional social work. So um, 
we will talk about those things, but congratulations. Thank you. I'm very happy for you. And thank you again for just trusting me, right? Yes, ma'am. You were there. Um, And thank you for coming in and sharing with the community. Because again, whenever people come in, it's never about me and what I've done. It's always about giving back to your fellow colleagues who are now on the other side of this, right, virtual room waiting to, you know, get support for their exam. And now you're on the other side of it, ma'am. You're done. (laughs) So what advice would you give to your uh, peers out there regarding the, just your experience, um, any encouragement at all regarding their process? Um, Definitely make a study plan and stick with it. At least try to study. If you can't study um, every day, try to study at least maybe three times out the week. Not saying study for three hours, four hours. Take an hour. Take 20 practice questions. Take just a little information so you can become comfortable with, for one, doing practice questions because you have to be comfortable with doing it because we have a long test. We have 170 questions to do in four hours. A lot of people... um, in my like from what I've spoken to a lot of people run out of time so you need to take do the practice questions get familiar with it get comfortable with it take the ASWB practice exam because before you um before the week of the exam so you can be comfortable with that and you can see the type of questions they ask or like that format per se so once you go into the testing station it is not your first time seeing this because if you do that, it, it could be overwhelming. It could be scary. So I would definitely say take the ASWB practice exam so you can know what it looks like. And definitely try to study more than less, especially if your test is coming up. And don't be like me. I'm a procrastinator. So. 